everyone, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be naming the top five equations that I think every structural engineer should know off the top of their head. Some of these equations will be especially useful when going in for an interview as a graduate. You never know when an interviewer will ask you a technical question, and having these in the back of your mind might just give you the edge in that interview. Some of these equations will be extremely trivial to a lot of people, but I do ask these in interviews when I'm interviewing with a fresh graduate, and I do know that other people will ask these kind of questions which will use these equations in the interview process as well. In all honesty, I don't think there's actually that many equations you actually need to learn on the top of your head. As long as you know how to find them very quickly, I think that's fine. But I just think these five equations will be extremely useful if you know on the top of your head and you can just bring them out whenever you need them. Okay, so I lied when I said top five equations, but I've basically grouped some together. The first equation is the elastic modulus used for calculating moment resistance. I commonly use this when determining bending resistance of a flat plate section, such as an I-beam with a top plate on, you need to check that plate for a bit of bending moment. The next equation is the second moment of area, or sometimes also known as the moment of inertia. Whilst not too commonly used on its own, it is an equation you should really know because it is so similar to the elastic modulus. And it's really useful for determining second moment of areas in plate girders by using parallel axis theorem. This next equation is a super quick way to determine reinforcement required in the concrete section without going through the full design, which you can do later. There will be a lot of times when you're going to be creating concrete frame models or doing quick checks. You will have some bending moments from the analysis and you just need a rough idea to see what kind of reinforcement you need in the section or if the depth of section is enough. You only have three variables, moment from the analysis, yield stress of reinforcement which is just a constant normally, and the effective depth which you can work out really quickly from the depth of a section. It will be very easy with this equation to work out what reinforcement you need and if the depth is going to be adequate. Cantilever structures come up a lot, so knowing these two next equations is super important. These are found commonly in balcony designs, but honestly, they probably occur in almost every project I've ever done. I've been asked on the spot in a meeting before about what depth of structure would be required to support some balconies. I was able to scheme up a quick structure with a rough depth at the meeting just by using these equations, so don't underestimate the usefulness of these equations. This next equation is a stress equation, and I was taught this in my first year at uni and I'll never forget it as the Missy equation, and I'll never stop calling it that. Everyone I've met from Cardiff University who was taught this knows this as the Missy equation, and it's called the Missy equation because M stands for moment over I for the second moment of area, which is equal to S for stress over Y for the depth to a neutral axis. This equation requires you to know the second moment of area or the moment of inertia formula I mentioned earlier. I use this a lot in foundation design when you have both a point load and a moment, it's useful to work out the net stress on the ground and check that you don't have any uplift or tension. A more extreme but also common use case would be for retaining wall design, where you need to again design the footing to make sure you're not overstressing the ground due to the retaining earth pressures. Without a doubt, the most used pair of equations, which is a simply supported beam supporting either a UDL or a point load, both extremely common and is likely to come up in an interview. I would learn the moment, shear and deflection equations off by heart as they are so useful and comes up almost every day. The deflection equation is probably most used in steel beam design and I've done a video covering the design of a steel beam so go check it out if you need to learn how to design a steel beam. I'll leave a link in the description below. Hopefully you found this useful. There are a lot of equations which you'll be needing to use as a structure engineer but in all honesty there aren't very many you'll need to learn as long as you know where to find them say span to depth ratio in design of concrete structures as long as you know where to find that in the code or say the red book you know that's enough i think knowing these equations off the top of your head is just going to be extremely handy and just make your workflow extremely efficient anyways if you've enjoyed the video please remember to like and subscribe and i'll catch you on the next video cheers